For the most part, robots aren't scary. The only fear they use is that of our crumbling society, that one day we are going to have to succumb to the sentient beings ruling the world. It takes a lot to make an audience cower at the appearance of a bot. It's not through appearance, but through the hardware and the malice that is running through the code. So today on Top 5 Scary Videos, I'm going to be counting down our list of the top 5 scariest horror movie robots. Before we begin though, be sure to stick around until the end of the video where I'll be responding to some of your comments. Let's jump in. Coming in at 5, Mark 13 from Hardware. Hardware is a highly underrated sci-fi thriller released back in the 90s, starring none other than Dylan McDermott and Iggy Pop. Hardware is about the head of a cyborg that reactivates, rebuilds itself and then goes on a violent rampage in a space marines girlfriends apartment. Now looking at this film as an outsider, it can almost be too stupid to fathom, with Mark 13 entering the film as a handful of parts, only to rebuild itself and launch a killing spree. It sounds dumb, yes, but it's haunting, but it's haunting, with its name being a reference to an apocalyptic biblical passage passage, with, I quote, no flesh will be spared being mentioned multiple times throughout. Not only is Mark 13 a robot attached to a skull like head, but it is also painted like an American flag. Which adds double the fear factor, cause patriotism, it's dangerous. Now what truly makes Mark 13 something horrifying to feast upon is its sheer brutality throughout hardware, not to mention its 6 primary limbs and 3 auxiliary limbs, most of which are designed to drill, saw or for the most part mangle. Yeah, You don't want to come across Mark 13 in this post nuclear war world. Coming in at 4, Hector from Saturn 3. Relax. Trust him, no. Alex. Still. Don't let him touch me. This 1980s sci-fi horror did not go down in cinematic history, that's for sure. Directed by Stanley Donnan and starring Farrah Fawcett, Kirk Douglas and Harvey Keitel, this film follows two lovers stationed at a remote base in the asteroid fields of Saturn, who are ultimately intruded upon by a retentive technocrat from Earth and his charge, a malevolent 8 foot robot. A robot named Hector. Now quite simply, Hector is too good for this movie and arguably one of the only redeeming factors that Saturn 3 has. Has. Hector is a towering killer whose tiny stalk of a head rises from a muscle bound body, which is distressing to say the least. However, more distressing still, a scientist designed Hector to be a possible replacement for researchers on a base orbiting Saturn, during which time he accidentally transfers his own predatory lust for Farrah Fawcett into the robot. Nightmare. This B movie is straight up crazy and ridiculous, and sadly, even Hector can't save it. But at least it adds a little fear to an otherwise flat movie. Coming in at three, Michael from A Boy and His Dog. Now, I may be cheating ever so slightly with this number, as A Boy and His Dog is more sci-fi and less horror. If anything, it could be considered a comedy. I'm sorry. But please just hear me out. Directed by LQ Jones and starring a very young Don Johnson, A Boy and His Dog follows quite literally a young boy and his telepathic dog as they wander a post-apocalyptic wasteland together. Now I'll be warned this film is not as cute as it sounds, but is instead incredibly bleak and surreal, with the pair wandering an irradiated world before discovering Covering an underground utopia. And this is where we meet Michael. Michael is a grinning android in a perverted clown makeup, donning a straw hat and overalls looking like a stereotypical farmhand. And as we know, there is something inherently scary about clowns, even when they are androids dressed like farmers. The true horrors of this film lie with Michael. He kills with his hands while smiling with rosy cheeks as he spends the film ending lives and crushing heads. It's a juxtaposition that makes us feel nothing but discomfort throughout this bleak and tedious journey. Coming in at two, Drone Sphere from Phantasm. <laughs> Now Phantasm is just batshit crazy and if you think you know what's going on in this film, you probably don't. Straight up. It's confusing, weird, yet it has something special, something that keeps you coming back for more. Released in 1979 and directed by Don Coscarelli, Phantasm follows a teenage boy and his friends as they face off against a mysterious grave robber known only as the Tall Man, who keeps a lethal arsenal of weapons with him at all times. The plot might sound scary enough, but quite simply, a robot is the most terrifying element of Phantasm. 
a sentient drone sphere that lodges itself into its targets head before drilling into the brain sending blood squirting through the drones rear paw. It's simply unforgettable and absolutely disgusting at first glance and impossible to unsee. Phantasm, watch it, watch it for the drone sphere, your grey matter depends on it. And finally coming in at number one, Ash from Alien. Ash! A second here. We often forget about the secondary threat lurking within Alien. Our mind automatically jumps to the Xenomorph, the terrifying alien that poses a threat to a space merchant vessel responding to a distress call. The Xenomorph steals the show, but we can't forget about Ash. Ash is the synthetic employee aboard the vessel, however his true nature was kept secret from the rest of the crew, who believed, as you would, that he was merely another human, which is where our problem arises. Ash is a sleeper agent whose sole purpose is to board the Nostromo to ensure the Xenomorph is returned to the company for study and use in their bioweapons division. Now, all is not right with Ash and it can't simply be chalked up to defective programming, no. There is something decidedly non-robotic about him, something malicious and this is proven to us when he attacks Ripley. As he's chasing her around the vessel and attempting to choke her with a rolled up magazine, there's something animalistic, crazed, even serial killer esque about him. He appears less like a robot following orders and more like an out of control madman who is relishing in his assault. It doesn't end there though, even after Ash is decapitated, he manages to become even more terrifying by oozing a milk like substance during his disturbing interrogation scene. At this point, if you haven't seen Alien, what are you even doing with your life? Watch it. Do it now. Well, there we have it. Do you guys agree with our list? Were there any scary robots that we missed? Leave us all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below. Before I go though, I just want to respond to a few comments from one of our last videos. Top 5 Scariest Independent Horror Films Russell Mallow said, Pontypool is amazing and still relatively unknown. An instant classic. I couldn't agree more. Not many folks know about Pontypool, but they should. It's one of the greatest horrors we have ever been blessed with. Plus, it's Canadian. No You said, What's up with the quality of this video? Muti looks highly exposed. Haha. -ha. Nope. I'm just highly pale. Haha. -ha. Horrors by Lily C Nation said, You guys seriously have some of the most consistent content I've ever seen. Thank you for introducing me to Black Mountain Side, among many others. It was a very well done Lovecraftian film. Well, thank you very much Lily, I'm glad you're enjoying the content as well as our movie recommendations. And on that note, if you haven't already, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss another scary vid. And until next time, see you later.